Bueno, pues ahora vamos a recibir a siete chicos que son nada más y nada menos. Now we will welcome the seven winners of the European Cybersecurity Challenge and we will have and Raul and Antonio as well to interview them. They'll explain what the contest was like, how they got ready for it, how they got ready for the competition and what the competition itself was like. But before anything else, let's watch a video of their prep. Español que va a representar a nuestro país en los European Cybersecurity Challenge. Spanish team will represent us in Düsseldorf for the European Challenge. Bueno, pues si os parece... So, boxers, trainers, come into the ring. Let's welcome them with an applause. Bueno, eh, gracias a todos por estar aquí. Y esto es el comienzo de una historia bastante bonita. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the beginning of a beautiful story. Uh, we are in 2016, but we need to say that back in 2015, the DD for INSEVE recruited a group of talented people, very talented, technically speaking, talented people. This was a selection that could win the cybersecurity challenge in Europe. 2015, they were the new team, the reveal team, and 2016, Spain, second year, and they got the gold medal. And this is a team, right, Raul, that made it. Do you have a question? As you can see, they work as a team, but they did not compete last year jointly. Each of them, just like you, competed individually against each other, but this year they were a team. And even if we are a team, you can see, it's difficult to even choose the same t-shirt you saw that in the picture. So, well, let me ask you a few questions. And this has to do with it. What did you find a bit more difficult to work as a team? Any of you can take the question. Jose. 
Ah, sim. Não? The most difficult thing as, as a team has been coordination and communication. Since each of us, we are used to working individually. So whenever we get information or we make progress, we share it, we keep it for to ourselves and we want to go all the way through. And maybe to work as a team, it would be better to communicate and have the whole team work together on th these advances, on those progresses. This magical thing. Uh, maybe some of the young people in the room will be part of the selection next year. But it's also about training. Is gyms and many more things you need to be trained on. Borja, what did you like the most about this instruction time where you had different instructors, even former colleagues from 2015. Thank you, Boha, for your comments. The best part was how we understood each other from the very beginning. We've been so very coordinated, as houses said. It was difficult to start being coordinated, but it's always been a team of people who's uh, knowledgeable of the sector and we look into foreign and it was not so difficult to become a good team that's what they say now by the way you should have seen them first day coming in till they get coordinated by the way but well yeah uh, oblivia what would you say to those that are competing here today or are going to compete tomorrow what would you say about this competition captain basically those who late today do not get scared keep competing keep fighting against anyone at any level they can do it and they've proven their capabilities and they will always manage to learn something and those competing tomorrow was not the same it's just the same do not get scared and go for it and we have this one person who we thought would not do much it's Pablo the youngest one coming from Cyber Olympics, uh, that's the name. But Pablo got so very integrated into the group. And so, what about the, the contest day? As it is said, the adrenaline kicking in. What did you like the most facing and uh, up 10 teams? I don't really know. I, I wouldn't know. I actually did not have experience. I, I had not participated in many of these contests. And we had Cyber Olympic in this year, uh, a few but has nothing to do as with a real competition, with uh, pressure you're under. And there's 10 teams with the top 10 hackers from every country. So it is serious. And so stressful. Minute one, and you need to take answers, get the flags and get score. And for whatever the reason, mark. Uh, registers do not work, the school registers do not work, so they were stressing and pressing. So, minute one, stress all the way to the end, even though we were quite ahead of them. But it is true, there's a lot of stress and pressure, and this is a constant. And the worst minute, the worst minute of all competition, what was it? Juan Carlos. I know you don't like it, but what was it? Romania takes uh, ahead of us. I don't know, stress, this tension, I don't know what to say. Did you think something? We, we thought we win because we always win, right? I have to say, there was something that really helped. We were feeling unmotivated and we got there. We had just a tiny room for five people, no towels, no soap, only bunk beds. And then we go there and they, we had a limit, a cap, a budget cap saying that it was 300 euros and they had a server and we knew it's, it was much more expensive. And you see, uh, we were fighting it. So we go to the vote and in the end, they say that if they had a server, they keep it. And we were down. We were feeling terrible. And Antonio decided to encourage the team, yelling around Spanish way, even when the team had not achieved a thing. And you see, there was a second target there. It's not just encouraging them, but disencourage all others. And this we, we heard at night. It works. It might be good to create number two and three. We had no flags back then. But there was anxiety. It is true. 
when we were called to the jury, we thought, what did we do? Because, you know, walking around, well, they are good, but they are even scary. So my question is, Antonio and I, what, 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 what did we miss? It cannot be told. Oh, we would be disqualified. Okay, okay. Raúl said that they had their place and um, password hacking. You know, up north they have a two-structure mine. Spain, we always sort it out, always do. But uh, Adrian, what secret tool did we have available? When it is released, Europe trembles. This is Daniel's book, notebook. Daniel, maybe people don't know what it is. Do you, you don't know what Daniel's book uh, is? So it's a book and a pen and works just as well as a cracking server. When Daniel gets his book no notebook out, Europe trembles. I have a question. What's the best thing you lived, Daniel? Your best experience, what you liked most? Everything. There's nothing that I like better or worse. Competition, training, competition. What I liked the least was the hotel room. Me as well. So having one, of course. Because we feel proud, right? This I said it last year. This is something that you need to understand. You do it for you, yourself, your family or your country. That's what you do things for. This time around, it was a Spain that we were representing. And it would be nice to discuss, would you understand what's a party when you win? What's the after party? So the picture that comes to mind cannot be revealed. Well, so nice, very nice. Spanish team, not just technically, but we earned the respect. Because, yes, Spain is understood as party, yes. But we knew how to guide other countries to ha have fun. And even those scoring worst, what matters in the end is meeting people from other countries that have your, your preferences, same ideas, and we had so much fun. So I really recommend that because it's all worth it. As you can see, we had fun and we did so many things. So if you agree, because it seems technically we haven't shown anything, we had some people that had a presentation ready for each example case that you can find maybe next year for this competition. And if you agree, Antonio, we move on to two team members to get ready, Jose and Danny, and they will technically show you what the challenges were about. I'm Jose Ignacio Rojo, he's Daniel Fernandez. This is a short presentation on the competition itself and a couple of challenges that we've come across, specifically one scoring class. So there was a series of uh, classes, categories, where you would get a score, and we would tell apart attack and defense and jeopardy and achievements. We had the core of the contest that was defense and attack, where different classes were scored, such as availability, cold patching, attack, defense, and then a special one that was power net, that was doing something that is not supposed to be done, a black hole into the organization. Here, it was about attacking other teams' servers as we would defend our servers at the same time and patch code as well to cover all vulnerabilities. Then Jeopardy. It is a flag capture, as we've seen before. These are challenges from different classes that you need to solve. Then achievements which basically would be performing a task such as setting up an intermediate CA from a CA that is given to you and develop a small app managing 
privileges based on the uh, certificate signed by said element or body. The CTF architecture was like this. There was one servant and one MV where one for each. There was two servers, so four of them total. Ours was inside the machine and another one to which we have no access. The access to that, we got it through a gift to correct vulnerabilities. The deploy was automated, so we only had access to, our, to the root in our server. So we followed the, this strategy. The defense server, we did everything we could. We started the web server to each machine. The, they had a, uh, an element, and we added an engine. engine together with the Apache, and that way we would have control over all the attacks that we would get in. And then also, code patching. We, we covered it all of us together. So this is a short cryptography challenge that we had. We would get a private errors RSA password or code key, sorry, but part of the private key was covered. Concealed. So you see, we have access to basis 64, which itself is valid. So we can extract information out of it, as we will see in a minute. Good. So you know how private chains work? Does it ring a bell? N does not? OK. Basically, this information on screen would be the hexadecimal number, a format of the number. Those asterisks would equal this. So this is a specification to define RSA parameters as a private key. So the last part of the key was this. So if you know how RSA works, those are prime numbers. And so it was <clears throat> the end, but it was not complete. We would have DQ, we have DP, DQ, and QI. Jose will explain what it is. We have a small part of the prime Q number. We've got DP, which is CRT sub index of uh, super index for for the one, the first one, and Q, it's the CRT coefficient for reverse Q. CRT stands for Chinese reminder, so it's the contrary to the module operation. And basically, this is just an optimization to locate it in a reasonable time. So what do we lose? We need to find the prime numbers P and Q that are the private key. And to get there, we use math, math formula that define RSA. And we can see that on the top right side, that when developed, are located on the lower right side. And we play around and we get P and Q using the last digits for Q. So we have this Python, Python script that will help us find the numbers. What did we do? We had a Python script to solve equations and get the original prime numbers. It's worth to say that this function that says prime number, it's not to check whether it's a prime number, but to make sure that there is a valid candidate for the coefficient. In a nutshell, we needed to have prime numbers P and Q that were part of the private key, and through math formula, we could get them. That was the challenge, and this one of the challenges we liked the most. So let's expose it for attack and defense, one of the applications, and how we gain control of the system. This is an app, and so pictures could be uh, uploaded. So this is a platform where we could upload images and the like, and we had the information. We were told that we have uh, this backdoor, and then we 
took a look at, we found everything that was located in the server, and then even the image, if it had embedded information, that is to say, pixels of the image were extracted, and then we executed like if it were Python code. So therefore, it was just a remote execution of the code. So therefore, we have an invitation access to give, and we didn't have full access to the whole code of the app, so we didn't know how to fix it. So well, the solution would be modifying the GIF, the image, but the ideal image solution would have been to remove the backdoor, but we couldn't do it. So we decided to self-attack, to attack ourselves and then just to disappear from the server. And well, for whatever reason, the other teams didn't do it, didn't do the same thing, and they left that open. So basically, the pawn category comes from remote code execution. So it is a special category with its own scoring. And well, well, we just wanted, you know, we were so satisfied to have achieved it. Well, last year, the la our team was not the winner. And well, we repeated this year, we achieved it this year again, we are extremely satisfied. So once we have our uh, CRT, the remote code execution, then we want just to escalate privileges. We just want to get root access. There are different ways to do it, and you never know. You never know whether it is possible or not. So we just uh, decided that we wanted to do it. We were resolute that we wanted to do it. And then last September, there was a new vulnerability out there that had a huge impact. And then we decided to just to bet for it and say, have they uh, fixed it or not? And then it takes 20 or 30 minutes to try it because in carrying out all these tests is tedious. Is it worthwhile spending our time on that, wasting our time on that? This was widely, widely uh, discussed, uh, but we didn't know whether the vulnerability had been fixed or not. So here was the right time or the time for us to test this, okay, whether there was something strange or not. And then, well, regarding the vulnerability, well, does this ring a bell to you? Have you seen this before? You haven't seen it before? That's the dirty cow. Some of you know it. Have they fixed it? Well, we supposed that it was fixed, and they said, well, is it worth our time to try and fix it? Well, actually, they had not fixed it. Therefore, vulnerability was still there in September. And there is a vulnerability that allows you to write in any file of the hard disk with any username. Uh, then how do you get root? Do you either write the binary and you run it and that's it and you have root. But the problem that we have with that is the situation is that it is very stable. Well, the stable is not, no, sorry, the exploit is not unstable, but the proof of concept example leaves the machines in an stable state because they are not well implemented, so to speak. So this exploit leaves the machine in an inconsistent state. So if someone uses it, anyone uses it, the, an accident may occur. One of the rules of this competition was do not sabotage. You cannot really sabotage your adversaries. We had access to the root of the computer. We could not sabotage them. We could not spy them. We could not read their code. So the jury came to us expressly and said, please, please, you cannot use this. They reminded uh, us on that. And as I said, this was very, very unstable. Well, the problem of it being unstable is, well, on the one hand, you can fix it with what you see here on top of the screen. And then we decided to take advantage of this flagging kernel. And the first thing that we did was to disable this statement that says on top. So this time the file in the hard disk cannot be overwritten. And it also fixed the problem of kernel panic. The problem was well, the memory was corrupt. 
So we didn't see anything. The server was not left unstable, but but the British didn't do what we did. We have to say that we did pound. We were the first ones to do it, and then the British team repeated. But they repeated against Liechtenstein team. But they went that they went able to have a, a stable machine and they flooded they flooded the Liechtenstein machines and then they they started to be considered whether there was some attach or not on the part of the English and that was against the rules and then the captain of the British team had to swear that that was not ill intended that it was just an accident so we were shown as an example. They said the Spanish team executed the same exploit, but nothing went wrong. They knew how to do it right, so they had the necessary knowledge to get it right. And we have to say that the envoy of ENISA, the European agency, was completely against this philosophy. As I said, well, we just want to uh, train professionals that really fit to this category. We just don't want to train people who uh, will, will misbehave. So it is good that we, our team, knew how to make a proper use of it and how to keep and stick to all the rules of the competition. So this formula says that if we act as a team, we will get much more further than if we act individually. There were other teams there that were very strong. However, they were acting individually. They were not communicating with each other. They wanted to work individually, and that was a hindrance for many teams. And I have to say that last year I also was in the Spanish team. That was my second year. And a significant difference from last year to this year is that last year we had less organization. We, I mean, as a team, we were less organized. Last year's team had talent. However, we were not as well organized. And this year we improved a lot in terms of organization. We, each of us, had clearly defined tasks. We made up a team and we each had our role and function in the team and uh, this is what uh, helped us gain scores and um, points uh, up until we just ended up winning the competition so this is all from us thank you very much for your attention right because speak images speak louder than words and we want to play a video so that you have a feel, so that you can experience for a hand what the challenge was about.
para terminar. Eh. All right, to finish, well, you've seen more members of the team in the video that couldn't make it today. Pablo, Jimeno, Angel, and there are very many other people behind this team, not only us. I would like to call to the stage the rest of the members of the team so that you know them and to give them a big applause. So please, Tatiana, you come up here, Susana, Beatriz, Alberto. Calron, remote. Moncho, Juanjo. Please stand up. So you see our cameras, they did a great, great job. We also would like to thank them. So we believe that it is an extremely good experience. It is open to the participation of you all. Next year we have the challenge. We will have the challenge not only to be uh, lower in the rank, perhaps winning it is not uh, possible, but we just want to give the best of ourselves. So next year competition will be in Spain, we will be organizing it and then the challenge is just to end up in a very high position and then the challenge is also to organize it. So thank you very much, big applause to all of them. All right, now family photo. Say cheese. 